This is Dr. Mariah White, host of Your Life Matters. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. How's it going, everybody? Hey, guys. This is Keith. And Katie from Coffee with Keith and Katie on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. When you're done listening to this show, I hope you'll come check out our show, Coffee with Keith and Katie. A new episode comes out every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. preparing. Don't fear failure so much that you refuse new things. The saddest summary of a life contains three descriptions. Could have, should have, might have. Good morning. Welcome to Public House Media. Welcome to Choose to Rise. I am so glad that you are here with me this morning and that you are joining us here as we talk about what are the things coming up that are going to help you start 2019 in the best way possible. Are you ready to take on 2019? It is 2018 is ending here in just a matter of days and I can't wait to help you make the most of it. If you are joining us here for the very first time on Public House Media and Choose to Rise, I just want to thank you so much for showing up today, for pushing play, for being a part of this wonderful time with us today. I am so grateful and so honored that you're here. Um, I just want to make sure that you uh, you feel welcome, that you are that you're joining us for the first time, that you know that we're here every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. A podcast comes out, um, and you can join in anywhere that you get your podcasts. Um, if you are on Podbean or Apple Podcasts, just hit that that subscribe button, leave a rating and review, letting us know what you think about Choose to Rise so we can always be improving and serving you the way that you want to be served. Um, I'm happy to support you and encourage you and be with you always. And, um, when you do that, that rating and review, it just helps more people find us and helps us be a part of um, the good things that are here. Um, we have a, a review recently from Gabe, um, and I'll be sharing that with you here in a few minutes. But what I really want to do this morning is really talk to you first about what it is that we can do to set ourselves up in 2019 um, as our absolute best selves. And that's what we're all about here at Choose to Rise is helping us, helping each other feel our absolute best, helping us rise up out of our current situation and live our best life. Now, if that's you, if you want to do those kinds of things, if you want to live your absolute best self, you are in the right place. Because that's what we do all the time here on Choose to Rise. And if you are, you know, we have a team, a team Rise and Fit, <laughs> that is uh, helping women be strong and healthy in 2019 as well. We are working on and supporting each other and living our best life through fitness, through nutrition, and through positive mindset. And this is just one of those pieces. So thanks again for joining us here. I love and appreciate that you're here. If you want more information on being a part of Rise and Fit or a part of Together We Rise, which is a group of women who are just supporting each other and accountability pe- people, um, I'd love to help you in that as well. But let's get started, right? Okay. I'm sharing today with you some processes and tools that are going to help you be your absolute best. It's, we're going to talk about goal setting. We're going to talk about getting yourself ready to take on 2019. And we're going to really work on being our absolute best. So you know, this is the process that I've used over the last few years. I've gone from a busy working mom um, outside of the home, really working on and building my side business um, because to making it my full-time business and really moving forward in things. I've tracked and reviewed things along the way. I've made changes as needed, and I want to help share with you some tips and strategies on whatever your goals are for you to find success in 2019. What you really first have to do is ask yourself what it is that you really want? What are your priorities? What is it that you are looking for? What is it that you want to achieve? And when you can know those things, then you're going to be able to uh, really make a daily commitment to those goals, live your best life, keep your spirit alive, and resolve to be strong and your mindset focused on the actions that you need to take in order to achieve those goals. So let's begin with why you maybe should be setting some goals. Goals are a powerful thing, and there are lots of benefits to setting them. 
Goals direct your attention and your efforts. Goals help you um, identify what's really within your control and what you can overcome, which obstacles. They are empowering. They improve your confidence. They uh, are satisfaction. There's great satisfaction in the process of accomplishing those goals. And setting goals helps you stay focused on what it is that's really important in your life and what it is that you really want to achieve. And they also increase your motivation to achieve more and do more and be more, living the purpose that God's created you for. We're all here for a reason. We're all placed here with special gifts in our hearts, with special talents and special things that we can offer the world. And when we can tap into those things by setting goals and making action plans, that's when we really be are able to really accomplish the things that God's put us here for. So ask yourself, what is it that you really want? What are your priorities? What is it that you're looking for out of life? What do you want to achieve? and then making that commitment to actually doing something about it. So let's get talking here about what are some things that you can do. All right, so the first thing you need to do is step into a type of reflection, okay? You can't change what, what's happened in your past, for sure, like that's that's in your past, there's nothing you can do about it, but you can learn from the past. So taking some time, 10, 15, 20, maybe even up to an hour to really reflect on what's happened in your past and how you can, what maybe what it is that you want to change or what's something you want to do differently and really thinking about how did the year go? How has my past life gone? Um, if you don't, if you don't know where you're starting, it's hard to make a plan moving forward. So the first thing I want you to do is really reflect on how you feel about a lot of the areas of your life. Think about whole life here, okay? So write down or circle, you know, write down or think about how you feel. <clears throat> write down or think about how you feel with your body, with your work life, maybe with your school life, thinking about where you're at with money wise, thinking about where you're at with your relationships, maybe your love life, if you're married or in a, in a um, relationship that way, uh, with your friendships, with your self-worth. How do you feel about those things in your life? Where are you at in those areas? And then really start to think about where your value system is. What do you value? Do you value having money? Do you value having success in your work life? Do you value yourself and your body and your mindset? Do you value the friendships that you have in your life? Think about what it is that you, what is it that your value system tells you, what you really want out of life, what your priorities are. Because if you just start setting a whole bunch of goals that don't really mean anything to you or don't align to your value system, you won't get there. And then you'll just feel defeated because, oh, I set this huge goal to, to raise a million dollars or to earn a million dollars in my year. But if you don't value money, if having a million dollars really isn't going to be something that serves you or that, you know, is an ultimate goal for you that aligns with your values and priorities, it's not something that you're going to achieve. And they're just going to be like, well, I didn't hit that goal. So let's just think about how we can, we can achieve these, some of these things. Really getting started, it's just taking some time. Like I said, setting aside, you know, 10, 15 minutes, maybe up to an hour, brainstorming some things that, that you want to achieve, thinking about things that, um, are going to help you, uh, like I said, align with your value system and be where you want to be. Maybe you take some time and think about some of the things that you want to change in your life. You know, things that you're not okay with that are happening. Um, you know, think about, um, you know, in this kind of category, take a piece of paper and, and maybe turn it sideways, maybe have it lengthwise, however you want to make, but make these columns, a problem, a solution, an action plan, and a deadline. When you create a goal, you want to create a deadline to it. You want to give it a time limit because you don't just want to go through the motions of the day. You really want to make sure that you are putting a, a deadline on it so that you take action to get there, that you can achieve the things that you want to achieve. So when you put a deadline on it, it becomes real. It becomes, this is when I have to achieve this by. It's not just a wish, but it's it's something that you've set your mind to that you're going to accomplish. So when you create that list, you've reflected on your on your life so far. You've you've thought about where you are at with your with your body and your physical health. You've thought about where you want to be with work and with your school, you or your school. You want to um you thought about what your money situation, your love life, your friendships, all of that kind of stuff. You've been thinking about life as a whole, not just one area. And you have come up with some things that you want to change. So then you create a list of problem, solution, action plan, desired, uh, or the deadline. 
And you think about what is it that I want to change with my money situation? What is my problem um, that I'm living paycheck to paycheck? What is my problem with my love life? I'm not spending enough time with my spouse, um, with friendship. I'm not, um, I'm not a caring friend. I'm not listening. I'm not available. Whatever the things are that you have as a problem in your life, write those down in the first column. And now, no, don't just focus on the problem because well, if you don't create a solution to the problem, we're never going to get anywhere. And what you focus on, you create more of. So what we really want to do is focus on solutions. We want to focus on the things that are going to help us get out of the problem and moving forward in our life. If we always just focus on the lack, if we always just focus on the things that are not going right in our life, we'll never get anywhere. But this process is hopefully going to help you um, get out of the problem, look for a solution, create an action plan, some action items that you can do on a daily basis that you can and um, then have a deadline for and really moves forward with it. So kind of some six tips to align your actions with her priorities is be aware of your where you're currently spending your time. What are you currently doing to get these things? Create some non-negotiables in your life that you really want to um, simply have that you are going to do and um, and make them make them a priority. A non-negotiable in my life is my devotion time in the morning. A non-negotiable in my life is working out, moving my body and taking care of who I am and physically, mentally, emotionally. Those are all non-negotiables. Then you maybe create a short two to three action items of the day for each morning. For me, it's you know getting out of bed right away and my alarm goes off. It's sitting down with my devotional. It's drinking my go-go juice in the morning and really helping me get moving and grooving and getting started in the day in the right kind of way, developing that morning routine. Do something relevant to your goal every single day. Keep an open mind and the goal-related activities about, you know, keep an open mind about the goal-related activities that you have, that you want to keep achieving, and then journal about your progress at the end of the day. Think about how how did today go? Did I do the action items that I said I was going to? And is this really a goal that I want to achieve? You know, set yourself up for success. There's huge power in writing your goals down. And that's what I want you to do here. Talking about, you know, not only evaluating where you're at, but writing that stuff down and then putting it on paper so you can see it. You can really, really think about why you're there and what, what's got you to this point. Create some solutions on how you're going to change what it, that's going on in your life and then do something, make sure you have that deadline. You know, setting yourself up for success is really about, you know, creating a SMART goal. Have you heard about that before? You know, a SMART goal is a formula that, um, that, that works. Um, it's something that really helps you get crystal clear and some clarity around those goals. And when you have more clarity around the things that you want to achieve, it's a lot more likely that it's going to happen. So writing a SMART goal is where you get very specific. What exactly do you want to achieve? And then write it down in as much detail as possible. Goals should should contain a detailed description of what you want to accomplish, of what um, what it's going to take to accomplish it and how that's going to have a greater value and what kind of, what kind of you, you're going to maybe feel like, what you're going to maybe achieve, what it is that you're going to um, move forward with. So be as specific as possible. Okay. The second part is measurable. How are you going to measure this goal? How do you know that you're achieving it? What is it that's, that you can kind of quantify in a little bit of it so that you can keep track of your progress and keep going? You know, if your goal is to lose um, 10 pounds in the first six months, of the year because it's going to help you feel comfortable. It's going to help you be confident. It's going to help you fit into the clothes that you already have. It's going to all of these different things. And then that's a measurable thing. You can weigh yourself daily. You can weigh yourself weekly as long as you're not festering and, and, you know, using that as a control piece. It's just a data point. And when you step on that scale, know that you're not defined by that number, but that you are really working towards measuring your progress and thinking about the action steps you need to change in your day to get a different number. And then make sure it's attainable. You know, right mix of goals are challenging, but not too extreme. You know, saying I want to lose 10 pounds this week is extremely um, not attainable unless you're doing something drastic, which I don't want you doing. But saying you want to lose 10 pounds in a month, that's a little more doable. Saying that you want to lose 10 pounds in two months, that's definitely doable depending on your size, depending on your weight, um, depending on the action items that you're willing to take. Saying that you want to... Um, lose 10 pounds in a month and then only going on a walk or not eating it better, those, that's definitely not something that's going to, your goals and your priorities and things are not going to work there. Being realistic is the R um, of, of smart. An object, uh, an objective towards moving towards an objective, which you're willing to able, to, uh, willing and able to work towards. A goal is probably realistic if you're truly 
you truly believe that it can be accomplished. Um, you just need to make sure that you are working towards something that is realistic for your life. Saying that um, I personally want to lose 50 pounds this year, not so realistic. I don't have 50 pounds to lose. And that's really not something that I want to work towards anyway. I want to be strong. Um, I want to be healthy. I want to be encouraged. I want to be supported in this kind of way. Those, those are my kinds of goals. Um, saying that I want to you know, be a millionaire this year could happen. Is it realistic? Is it aligned to my goals? Is it what I really want to work on in my priorities? Think about those things. And is it timely? Have a specific date and of completion. Things should be realistic, but not too distant in the future. Saying that you want to achieve, you know, lose 10 pounds by the end of next year. Now that's something that you can totally achieve earlier than that. But whatever, think about whatever your um, timeliness is that you want to achieve in those days. Okay. So now the rest of the things are just making sure you're focused in on, uh, on focusing on the best things for your life. Now that you have identified how your day, how your life has gone so far, you reflected on the past year, you've reflected on the last few years, and you've identified some of the problems. You've started to think about some solutions. You start to create an action plan of what it is that you want to achieve, and you set a deadline to it by creating those SMART goals. Then, you know, really finding out what it is that um, you want to achieve and then start doing them. And you know, the takeaways for this today are align your goals with your priorities and make sure they're meaningful and give them value. Okay. I'll make sure that they align to the things that you want to achieve in life, not what other people want to do. It shouldn't be what everyone else is doing. Don't jump on a bandwagon with other people. Focus on what it is that God's put in your heart, when your mind, how he's created you to be. Write those goals down. Make sure that you have them someplace where you can always see them, someplace that you're really going, wanting to achieve them. And then I have the things up all over my office. Um, I've got these pictures behind me that keep me focused and, and remind me on a daily basis of why I do what I do. I've got quotes. I've got goals. I've got um, affirmations written on things that are ahead of me. So every time that I look up, I see the scripture, I see the goal, I see why I do these things. It reminds me constantly about what it is that I'm doing. The third thing is to break down your goals into manageable, actionable steps. Saying to my team this year that, hey, we want to hit elite. Um, we want to achieve this big goal in our business. Um, it, it seems overwhelming, but when you break it down into the small actionable items and create those non-negotiable steps every single day in your, in what it is that you're doing, it becomes way easier to do. So stop trying to, you know, eat the whole elephant at once, but break it down into small manageable steps and you, and identifying the things on a daily basis that you can do to achieve those goals. The fourth thing does, you know, does a kind of takeaway here is goals are not set in stone. Revisit those goals throughout the year and make changes as needed. You know, if you are, if you're set on this one goal at the beginning of the year and there's something that you really want to achieve and you get going and down the road and you're like, you know what, that really isn't something that I want to achieve. It's not something that um, is really aligned to my goals or that my current situation in life. It's okay to let some of these goals go, but it's also, um, it's okay to reevaluate and say, you know what, I can achieve this sooner than I thought I can and really, and do something different about it. And the fifth kind of takeaway I want you to take away this morning is celebrate the success, big and small. You know, we have this really big goal that we're working on towards the end of the year on my team. And we're celebrating all the successes leading up to it. I was just able to um, celebrate a couple of my teammates that have reached some big goals for them. That's helping the big team goal. And it's just so much fun to celebrate everything. You know, when you lose that one pound, celebrate it. Not necessarily with food, but celebrate it, right? Be encouraged by the success that you're making. And that's what you're talking about all the time, about reevaluating all the time. You don't know if you've made success if you're not measuring and thinking about the things that you're doing. So I hope that you're this is going to help you be successful in 2019. I hope that you align your goals with your priorities, make things meaningful, make them valuable, make things, write them down so that you can always be looking at them, reevaluate them all the time, break them down into into manageable action steps that are going to help you be your absolute best and help you achieve the goals that you want to achieve in life and celebrate, celebrate the successes big, celebrate the successes small because all the little things add up to the big things. You know, there's a saying that says um, championships are won with inches, not miles. And when you you add up all those little inches in your day, all those little non-negotiable pieces that you're doing in a daily basis to help you reach the big goal, 
that's when great success happens because all those little inches are gonna be what what makes it to the end, that are gonna help you go a little bit farther, a little bit better, and really help you achieve the great things in your life that you want to do. So, so thank you so much for joining me today here on Public House Media on Choose to Rise. I feel so blessed and honored that you decided to push play, that you're joining us here live, and um, I appreciate all of you for being here. I thank you so much from the very bottom of my heart for um, being a part of this uh, opportunity and, and helping us spread the message by liking, re- sharing on your social media, reviewing um, in P- Apple Podcasts and Podbean, and just everyone who has made this year a blessed year. Um, we've got just a few days left here on on uh, the 2018 version of this, and uh, we know we just have next next Monday. I'll be back, and will be the last show of 2018. And I I just want to say thank you, and uh, from the very bottom of my heart for helping um, just keep this alive and keep this going. And um, I hope that you continue to come back and join us here. I hope that you're able to take any and all of these steps, these little takeaways for goal setting and helping you set it yourself up for a positive 2019 and and forever on and that you keep coming back to choose to rise and that you if you want to get connected that you email me um, and we get talking or leave a rating review and I'll definitely be sharing those with you with you as well I just said that I would share my review with you from Gabe let's pull that up I just so appreciate everyone and everything that comes and be as a part of choose to rise and if you are ever wanting to know more about how you can be a part of this mission, uh, leaving a rating or review is definitely something you can do. So Gabe, Gabe Anderson recently said, uh, he's forever grateful for this show. I've recently started listening to your podcast and they have opened my eyes so much. Well, thank you, Gabe Anderson. I appreciate you leaving the review. I appreciate you leaving, uh, you know, taking some time to share with us and uh, be a part of, of Choose to Rise. And if you want to know more people that want to, you know, yourself featured here on Choose to Rise as a, a, rating, a rating review of the week or the day or where, however many are coming in, uh, I'd love for you to, to go do that and I'd love to get connected to you. Thank you so much, Gabe and Jane and um, others that have been leaving them. Emily, um, I will be sharing all of those here very soon, but thanks again so much and um, I hope you have a fabulous weekend and a fabulous day and um, see you all later. Bye.